Good morning, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webin CC webinar live keynote and knowledge sharing session. Thank you for joining. We would also like to thank Telefonica for sponsoring today's CC webinar live session. Now, I would like to welcome Jose Garcia, founder of GTC, to introduce a keynote speaker and later on, later on moderate the panel. For audience, if you have any questions for our panelists, or our keynote speaker, please use the chat box option. Or at the end of the panel, we will have a time assigned for the questions which you want to ask verbally. So you click on the raise hand button and then I unmute you and you can ask your questions. So that's it from me and Jose, over to you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending where you are connecting from. Thank you for dedicating us your valuable time. Thank you for your interest. Thank you already to the wonderful panelists that we have here. I would like to introduce Jose Antonio Cortez from Telefonica. Jose Antonio, um, it's um, time for you, your stage, your presentation. If you introduce yourself quickly, and then we're very curious to see what you have for us today. All right. Uh, so hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Jose, for the introduction. Um, so my name is Jose Antonio Cortez. I'm the head of product marketing within uh, TUS, is the Telefonica International Wholesale Services, a unit uh, of the Telefonica Group. Okay. So um, I'm going to share my screen and I will start with my presentation. Okay. So, uh, Jose, uh, can you see? Oh. I can, can, you I see? can see. We all can see your opening slide. Great. Yes. <clears throat> all right. So, as I was saying today, um, I want to give you an, an update um, on, on the on how um, um, Telefonica, okay, is, uh, we see all the roaming industry moving forward, okay, um, and how we are working, okay, to develop a set of services for this new digital area, okay. Chapters of the, the topics I will touch uh, quickly, you know, in these 50 minutes that I have. It's a, we'll see a little bit of of who is um, Telefonica. Um, I'll go quick on that, okay? M short market overview, okay? Understanding what is the scene, what is the situation, all that. Well, just reviewing it, all, all of us know what's going on, okay? Then um, I think one of the most important slides here is is understanding, okay, what are the topics and what are the challenges that uh, our customers um, have today, okay, um, and we will touch quickly on, on those, okay. What are the uh, the pillars, okay, of 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 the um, of of white telefonica or white tubes, okay, in this in this case, okay. What do we offer with review on, on the portfolio, touching a little bit on the innovation projects that uh, we are working on and, and the takeaways, okay? So as you know, uh, Telefonica, uh, well, we have all these figures, you no, know, most probably um, um, you, well, it, 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 they are numbers, no, but uh, we are one of the leaders, no, I would say, on, on the B2B business, um, B2B digital solutions, okay? Um, we work in, in different countries. We have operations in, in 14 countries, okay? Um, and, and have a, a global reach, basically, okay? Um, actually, um, I would um, define ourselves, no, or what are in terms of roaming um, with these two big, let's say, topics, no. Um, one that, uh, as as you know, um, we are a, a tier one, okay, carriers, a global carrier, with all the bidding agreements, um, with with other with partners and other players in the 
in the ecosystems, okay? We match a big amount of signaling destinations, roaming agreements, and, um, and, and we get up to 130 petabytes of data roaming traffic, okay? And the other nice thing um, uh, is, um, is this recognition. Know that, that an important thing is this recognition by the industry experts, no? Um, um, we have uh, been gathering you now for the last years several awards um, focus on, on Latin America, focus also in different uh, sets that we will review later uh, of services that we have in our portfolio. Okay, um, so this is always important, okay, uh, to have this, uh, this recognition. So going uh, straight now into the into the topic uh, or or one of the big um, uh, ideas, no, that is we were go we are going to talk in this round table. Okay, uh, is this uh, is this situation, no, the situation that we have on the roaming industry nowadays? And actually, I'm a positive guy, and I see this uh, as I said there as a two side of the same coin, no. On one side, we have uh, well all the circumstances of uh, of of the roaming um, revenues and, and 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 data traffic now decreasing this year, okay, um, and 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 all the well constraints that that the traveling is 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 behind all of this, obviously, but um, and but. As I was saying, no, it's it's there is a there is a, um we've been in, in worse cases, no, I would say, um than this. And 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 we see um hopefully we, we can recover no the, um, this growth no that, that the, the industry was having, no, um a more a two digit growth no that at least in our site we were having in the before this COVID thing started, no? Um, and we estimate, no, that for 2022, um, the, um, everything will, will probably will not be the same, okay? Traveling will, will not be the same, no, I would say, but at least um, all the data roaming traffic will, will you know, set in, in where we were, we were, and then grows, no, as as uh, as we were growing. Okay. Um, on the other side, we we I have to say that in in Telefonica we have seen like a parallel or at least a more positive or um, message, no, around um, other sort of of businesses, no, like the machine to machine businesses no so while the the runners no uh, traffic uh, well has this situation we see that there is an opportunity and, and we see um, that um, other um, solutions like m2m services is uh, at least maintaining a little bit okay the the market for for roaming uh, okay, um, and, and the expectation, obviously, that, that there are for this market is uh, is is really big, no? As, as per the numbers that analysts and um, are showing and, and are publishing. Okay, so say having said that, um, as I was saying, uh, we have uh, we need to understand exactly what are the circumstances, what are the problems, no? The pain points that. The customers have today. Okay, um, I have identified here um, four of the top roaming challenges. No, so obviously um, there is always um, an, um, a thought on the end customer experience. Okay, this is this is quite important. We need to to be able to provide the end customer on the roamers no, with uh, with those services and with with all that information. Um, that, that 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 require okay, but even um, bring new services, uh, making them access, uh, you know, um, new information. Okay, um, the other big topic is uh, partner agreements. No, this is um, when when you start or when a new company starts in 
in, a, in requiring roaming services, um, all the partners' agreements is um, is a big job there, no? And, and, and we have in our portfolio, I'll explain later, you know, a set of services that try to help uh, our customers on, on managing these uh, partner agreements um, and make it the, the, the topic, the thing easier for them, no? Visibility analytics, um, it's, it's more and more demanding feature. Um, customers, not only once, you know, to have a top service um, with high availability, higher reliability, but they want more and more know what's going on, okay? They want to understand what's going on for take decisions, no moving forward for their businesses, okay? Billing and charging is also, well, it's a topic, uh, billing and charging in the roaming space, um, well, came back um, lots of years back, no, but now we are seeing that there are new ways or the, the, the industry is just looking at um, technologies like blockchains to make billing and all these um, process you now within the ramen industry um, much simpler um, and, and um, um, with an option of taking hassle you now of, of the customers around this thing, okay? So, so basically, why choose no our capabilities? Okay, so uh, as I was introducing before, we are we have uh, a worldwide presence, um, very focused on on Europe and, and America. Okay, um, um, and, and and with services that we can also um, provide services um, in above, but through through third parties. Okay. Uh, probably um, two of the most important topics you know, uh, that customers in several surveys you know that we participate and, and other customers, network coverage and services reach is, is one of the most uh, important thing for our customers, okay? Connectivity options and network support uh, as the second one, okay? So, uh, we have that in, in our services and, 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 and that's uh, quite important. The other topic um, is our customer service, no? Um, as I say, there is your peace of mind, okay? We have a multilingual support for with service management center, okay? Um, um, in, in different places around the world covering three layers, operation management, but also technical solutions. Um, this is important, uh, the, 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 the thing, well, these are figures, no, but the most important thing is just to be um, compliant with, with these figures, no, and, 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 and this is why our customers, we retain, you know, um, our customers in the last years, no, because uh, we, um, we, we, um, we comply with with what we said, no, in terms of uh, network reliability um, and, and service uh, deliver. So, what do we offer? So, here is a summary of of our services. No, it's um, well. This service has been in the market for more and 10 years, I believe, uh, and it started with a baseline of a uh, transport network based on the IPX SMA standards, okay? Um, that is the way of um, where we can just um, um, transport no different sorts of, 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 of uh, traffic, no? Traffic, data roaming traffic, okay? And also signaling traffic, no different sort of signaling traffic, no SSCP, LTE, or even now that is coming the 5G signaling traffic. Okay, here I said also a quite important element uh, moving forward that is the data breakout services. Okay, so um, we are in a in a, nowadays in a situation where proximity, okay is quite important in terms of um, of, of getting uh, actually in a faster way into the 
into the service, no, into apps and so on. And with that breakout, uh, we can provide that access uh, in in you know on a regional basis as well. Okay, um, to 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 the visiting networks, no. On top of that, uh, we have a set um, a set of of, of value-added services. Okay, and here, um, uh, oops, sorry, I move forward. So here we have data control and throttling. Okay, all we provide with uh, information to our customers about the consumptions of all that data. Okay, that is crossing an, a, a network for the customer to to be able to take quick decisions, okay? We have all the um, home environment services also available and services like steering of roaming um, that make possible the, uh, the selection of the preferred network when, when you are roaming or the welcome SMS that uh, provides you with information of, um, of different uh, sort of information no, when, when, when you arrive to a to a destination, okay? On top of that, uh, we, have, uh, we have delivered a set of outsourcing services. We believe nowadays in, in this situation where, where the future is, is not very clear, I think this layer of outsourcing services is, the, it's, is really a help to our customers, those that uh, have, um, have like fixed uh, cost, you no, know, and, um, and by outsourcing several of, of all these services, you no, know, they can they can see a little bit of of, of breathe, you no, know, I, I would say, in terms of financials, you no. Know. Here we have signaling operations, so we can operate and, and monitor all the signaling uh, layer of of of. Um, of an MVNO, for example, we can deal with all the service openings, no, uh, all the um, the services that need to be um, um, need to be um, the first services um, that that needs to be done, you know, when when you are opening your operations, sponsor roaming that provides um, uh, a sort of expanding um, your roaming agreements, okay. Through through agreement through what what is called the IMC donors, okay, and that lets you get and and and, and have a, a quick reach, you no, know, of of destinations and clearing services, you no, know, that has been uh, you know within the roaming space for for long time, okay. On top of that, we are also working on more more close to. Uh, to the customers knowing what we call the engagement services, no? things like marketing campaign managers or or even a layer of business analytics, no? Rome Lake, we call it now, uh, roaming fraud will be the perfect wrap for all these um, low layers um, services that, that I have explained, okay? If we move into innovation and, and what are the well, uh, several of the projects that that we 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 are working nowadays, you no, know, um, around roaming uh, services. Uh, well, security is always a, a interesting topic. It's, it's cross to to any service, I would say. Um, and here, well, we are um, working on on developing, you no, know, and, and promoting, you no, know, and working with partners in in make this happen, you no. Know? 5G roaming introduced um, for the first time, no, a built-in secure and encrypted communication between the visited and the home network, okay? Here, um, so all of this needs to, uh, all this new architecture, no, uh, separating the signaling and the, and the user data, okay, with these different um, naming interfaces, okay, and, and the different protocols, no, like HTTPS, uh, to and, and, and the SEP, Security Edge Protection Proxy, okay? We are working on that. We are uh, looking at that ahead you now for what uh, the standards, um, you know, are delivered and, and are, you know, make it uh, to happen. We will be the first ones, you know, uh, adopting 
all these all these uh, services okay other in the roadmap around 5g we have other topics that we are working like key management supporting key management managing the sep okay and and so on and so forth uh, storing services no like steering of roaming engagement services um, and so on no um the other topic also quite interesting that customers uh, and i introduced already ask ourselves no it's it's about um um i want to put this is all these business and analytic layers no you i think you cannot live without having nowadays this layer of reporting or depth uh, in depth reporting or analytics no so um actually reporting based on individual services is no longer an option no and here what we are doing is just creating this lake that we call Rome lake is um, as is our next generation approach to business analytics around roaming no and gathering information from the signaling from the data roaming and for the data cleaning house um, 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 um getting you know um, a lot of much information insights you now um, for your roaming business okay from all possible angles you now financial performance network quality user experience and so forth so forth okay this is uh, quite an interesting project uh, that that we are working on um, and i believe uh, it's um it's this is one of the most innovation projects that that we have nowadays in in telefonica okay the other one uh, sorry because it's like not working all right um obviously no the the third topic in terms of um in terms of innovation no is blockchain no um as you know blockchain provides efficiencies no in contract rate management and settlement you know allowing operators to reduce cost or semi automated processes um um uh, and all of this is because all the all all these new technologies like 5G okay that is coming are bringing you know new services like that won't be work no in, you know um with with the current no billing and charging options so so here blockchain and um, and we are um we are working now um, and we have been doing POCs from Telefonica with other operators around this clear um, blockchain financial settlement solution now uh, in order okay to to make um this a uh, um an standard no or or happen um that the standards no is issue as soon as possible okay and here I'm um, going deeper no on, on blockchain where it can be applied okay so i um, i talk about settlement but uh, blockchain can also be applied for contract management as you know or even for settlement and financial clearing house but, but and also for data clearing house okay there are different um, benefits i would say on on, on each of these uh, use cases for blockchain um with the idea of um, automating at the end the end to end process no and allowing dynamic management in the in the roaming uh, relationship no so this is um this is uh, very important no um, and uh, uh, is very important avoiding all these disputes that we have nowadays um in in the roaming um in the roaming industry no so this is a a, a big step forward knowing in developing um, and having a better service no um between partners and also with the, with the end customers okay um, and finally i think i i i i pass the 15 minute thing but um just you know take away so for, for i want just you to get uh, four points big points no this is a tier one carry recognized by the industry uh can provide you with a full set of roaming service um actually for all all players okay and uh, we uh, have innovation no um, at the center of our 
of our DNA, okay? So, so we are there and we collaborate with others, okay, to develop this uh, roaming market. And having said that, Jose, and these are my, my slides. Back to you. Thank you, Jose Antonio. Thank you for, I would say, a quite positive uh, outlook. Um, mm -hmm. I take with me the, the growth expectation for next year of 93% when it comes to data roaming, the travel normalization by 2022, and, um, and that Telefonica is delivering what they promise. So very positive aspects you have presented to us here. Now, um, I would like to give uh, the panelists the uh, um, opportunity to introduce themselves quickly before we jump into topics um, about crisis, no crisis, roaming, not roaming, mitigation, productization, technology, and um, more interesting aspects of the current situation. Nabil, you want to start? Yes, of course. Uh, thank you, Jose. Thank you, uh, Jose Antonio. Uh, I know we have two Jose's today. Um, <laughs> we have to be specific. Uh, yes. very, very nice presentation, uh, Jose Antonio. Um, so I'm, I'm Nabil Bakush. I'm heading the uh, uh, group uh, roaming business um, uh, and also the, the mobile services and the messaging business for Etisabad Group. So thank you very much for uh, you, Jose, and thank you for Care Community for inviting me in, uh, in this panel and thanks to all the distinguished uh, speakers as well today. Great having you. Jakob, you want to continue? Yes, thank you, Jose. Uh, I'm Jakob Sjöberg from Sweden and uh, I work for Bospec and uh, we offer our customers a local platform and we have included uh, some uh, operator services so we can help uh, our partners or operators to get closer to the customers where they can utilize the, their services easier. Thank you. Very good. Arne, you want to continue? <clears throat> yeah, hi everyone. Thank you, Jose. So I work at uh, MTN Global Connect, which is the wholesale arm of the MTN group. And I am the group head of roaming for all the MTN, of course. Uh, thank you for the invite. Thanks for being here. Okay, Nadir, you follow? Uh, hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. My name is Nadir Patel. I'm working with Omantel and uh, managing the roaming and mobile services. Thank you, Jose, and thank you all the participants in the community for uh, joining us and giving us this opportunity to have the discussion. All right, so my turn now. Um, as Jose Antonio presented, roaming is... Um, topic of concern for the operators. And um, as I restated, you know, he, um, I think, presented a um, uh, perspective that is not as negative as I expected, I have to say. And I hope, I hope the outlook that Telefonica is presenting is the one that we can expect for 21-22. Now, I'm, I'm sure that some financial controllers working for the mobile operators or mobile operator groups will be quite happy looking back at the OPEX performance of the last nine months. So probably they generated some significant savings when it comes to the travel budget, to the conference budgets that... Um, actually turned out to be um, much more beneficial than, than originally expected. Nevertheless, there's um, probably a clear downside of the current pandemic crisis that I would like to hear um, from our experts um, today. Um, Arne, could, could you tell us a bit to what extent we would be speaking not only about the pandemic crisis, but also about the roaming crisis. You are responsible for, I think, like 20 markets, mainly in Africa, 
some in in Middle East. Um, could you describe uh, what the situation is really looking like? Yeah, so it is not looking uh, great, you know, and uh, I think uh, everybody can share that experience. Um, I mean, Jose Antonio showed it 58% well, down on data roaming. Uh, so it's no difference in my market. Actually, it's a little bit more there. And, um, you know, of course, this year we're not going to catch up on that. Um, the borders remain closed, you know, the government imposes these uh, restrictions. Um, so in, in the, before COVID, you know, we, we, if we wanted to travel, we checked, okay, do we have a passport, do we have a visa? And now we need to check, do we have a PCR, you know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then we need to do one when we arrive as well. So it's even not when the borders are opening that all of a sudden, you know, travel will, will start again. Uh, we don't foresee that, you know, there's, there's too many hurdles still in place. Secondly, we depend a lot on business travel, yeah? A lot less on leisure um, because of the regional situation. And uh, most operators in the Western world have the 80-20 rule where 20% of the rumors um, generate 80% of the revenues uh, in our case, it's more the 90-10 the rule, yeah? So we're even more dependent on business travel there. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, uh, it depends how you see it, uh, business is more conducted now over video, as we do now in this mm -hmm. panel session. Uh, people get used to it, it's not ideal, but I don't think the budgets for travel uh, will go up as uh, before um, COVID. Uh, or before the crisis, you know, at least in uh, maybe 2022. And again, Jose Antonio, I have to concur with him there. So yeah, uh, that's that's a bit the outlook. Uh, we are in for a long ride, uh, at least for another, you know, nine to 12 months from, from here before we see any, you know, uh, real good uplift there. Okay, so thank you very much for, for, for the outlook. Um, so Arne is saying that uh, to travel, he also needs his uh, PCR test. Uh, by the way, uh, Jose Antonio, you need to be careful when you say that you are a positive guy. You know, it can be misinterpreted uh, these times. So yes. just to put it into the, the whole context, I did myself already five uh, tests, uh, always negative so far. And, uh, and I think this is becoming um, uh, like the new normality that we move but we test each other. So um, interesting, Arne is saying that MTN is very much depending on business travelers and uh, less on, on leisure travel. Is that um, somehow different when it comes to Eddie Salat and Abi? Uh, I, I, I know Jose, uh, you have this, you share the same, uh, same idea. You're always challenging those financial controllers. Um, <laughs> but we're also doing it because we want to always meet people face to face uh, instead of using those uh, Teams and Zoom that is yeah. unfortunately becoming the norm right now. Um, yeah. I think from an Etisalat perspective, um, um, UAE obviously, uh, when you look at uh, a few months back, uh, has gone through, um, through massive changes. Obviously, lockdown during the Q2 period, I think that was uh, the norm around the globe. Um, but I think the good and positive thing, if I can be positive, uh, is also uh, uh, that July 7th, the UAE, uh, let's say, authorities, and especially the Dubai government, decided to open its borders to the whole world. That means anyone uh, from anywhere uh, in, in the globe uh, is able to land in Dubai with, obviously, a negative PCR test. Mm. Um, July 7th, that was, um, let's say, about two, three months ago. Um, and that was also coinciding uh, with uh, the travel, the high season, the summer holidays. As you can imagine, after three months of lockdown, people here in the UAE were really, really fed up. I mean, they wanted to, to go out, go back to their home countries and, and, and visit family and so on. So I think even though Q2 was, was pretty tough, um, mm -hmm. uh, in Q3, we saw a, 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 an interesting increase upside I would say on the right. on the outbound, and Excellent. and that was positive um, mm -hmm. uh, for 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 PNL obviously, 
Um, mm -hmm. and, and now that we are September, end of September, we continue to see an interesting upside, uh, both mm -hmm. on the outbound, but also on the inbound. Um, obviously in the UAE, we are entering also uh, uh, the, uh, the high season. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, the weather is becoming uh, better and better in Dubai sure. and in the UAE. So we hope that uh, with the opening of more and more, let's say, cities and destinations, um, thanks to Emirates Airlines, uh, you know, Emirates open more than 80 uh, cities around the globe, and they are opening every week more and more cities. We hope that this will also contribute somehow in, in stimulating, generating, let's say, more, more inbound uh, business and obviously also outbound for our own subscribers. We, 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 you were referring to UAE, Nabil, but you are responsible for 16 markets, if I'm not mistaken. So Correct. would you probably comment so, on the rest of the markets too? I mean, we, we see really depending on which country we are talking about. As you know, Saudi is still obviously locked uh, for, for the moment. Mm -hmm. Very difficult, even though they have announced uh, that the, the Omrah, uh, which is the, uh, the, the, uh, the religious pilgrimage, obviously uh, has been, as should probably resume in October. So mm -hmm. hopefully this will help also stimulate a little bit the roaming activity in, in Saudi. Um, but for the other markets, it's, 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 I would say, pretty tough and, and probably in line with what Arne uh, mentioned earlier. Yeah. As you know, we are uh, also uh, present in, in West Africa and obviously all those markets are still uh, in, a, in a lockdown phase. Um, uh, and, and also for, for Pakistan and Afghanistan, it's, it's also, uh, I would say, challenging. Um, mm. So uh, overall, it's, I would say, challenging, um, mm -hmm. except for the UAE, um, for which obviously uh, uh, the, the UAE authorities have taken... Uh, Pretty, pretty strong measures in, in opening up the country uh, pretty early uh, in, the, in the phase here. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Nabil. Um, Nadir, tell us a bit about the situation in Oman. I mean, I, I, I have to confess I've never been to Oman. Sorry for that. Uh, I, I will probably, uh, as soon as we can travel again, visit your wonderful country. But I heard that you have uh, the best um, desert safaris to offer for the tourists. You know, um, is, is that true, first of all? And secondly, um, does that have somehow an impact on the, on the roaming um, for Oman? Well, actually, we have uh, Oman is considered as the hidden jewel of the Middle East. And uh, we, ha we not only have uh, lovely desert safaris, but some beautiful wadis. We have some uh, lovely places to go and trek and hike. Uh, the GCCM community was uh, here last year in November. And they were also quite impressed with uh, the beauty that Oman has and the options that Oman offers. I, I would also share the good news with you that a week from now, Oman is opening up its uh, borders and the airport. So uh, I share the same positivity that Nabil has shared in his discussion earlier. Uh, we are opening up. We have seen uh, a growth, a, a slight growth coming up back in uh, Q3. Uh, we are positive that things will get better because the weather improves now. Our weather gets uh, better again now in October, November, December. So uh, we do believe that things will get better. I, a lot of people have started traveling and these are not business travelers, which is a good sign for us uh, in Oman. Mm -hmm. We see that uh, at least the cross-border traveling has increased. Mm -hmm. uh, UAE being you know, one of our uh, number one outbound roaming countries. But we also see people going to uh, Europe side now. And uh, I'm quite positive that uh, in 2021, we should be seeing the growth that uh, Jose Antonio has mentioned. Mm -hmm. Okay, again, be careful saying I'm quite positive. Nevertheless, we get the positive message here. Um, I, I have to admit that I'm kind of surprised because here in Europe, you know, we are going through a kind of shock second wave you know, and we don't, uh, we haven't hit the peak yet. Um, so it's um, great to hear that you see um, somehow some tourists or business travelers partly coming back and contributing to your much and beloved roaming revenues. Now, um, I, I think what we cannot deny is that having a little peak in September or not, there is a huge shortfall in revenues for 2020. There is no discussion about that. Now we could discuss to what extent uh, we will have a huge shortfall in 2021, in 2022, when it's going to uh, come back. 
slowly, quickly. Now, considering uh, the, the very big financial shortfall that the operators are, are suffering and might be suffering over the, the next years, um, do the operators have any, any special plans? Are they reacting to this uh, phenomenon? Are they reacting to the crisis that is also turning here and there to a financial crisis? Any, 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 any plans to launch probably new services or probably repolish the, the, the traditional services, uh, probably increase prices? Please tell me about your plans. We are all super curious to hear. Who wants to start? I can start if you want. Mm -hmm. That's okay. <laughs> So at MTN, uh, we, we made a decision in 2018 already to, to follow a strategy and we're not uh, deviating from that strategy, even though we have the, uh, the current uh, challenges on the travel. Uh, so, so actually, you know, all our opcos together now are in a verticalization process where we actually um, take all the people and put them in one team from all the opcos. On top of that, installing the roaming hub, you know, and by this, uh, by doing this, creates energies, efficiencies to uh, roll out, launch more uh, roaming services, uh, more roaming agreements, more discount deals to reduce costs and uh, actually enhance the and let the retail benefit from all this. Yeah, so so we are on course, on track of that, and even with this, um, you know, this gap year 2019 uh we're still going strong uh with a great team so yeah so that's that's the the main thing that we're doing uh on the other hand of course mitigating 2019 well um you know where we 2019 have, or 20 uh, Armin? uh still this year so uh, um 2020 of course okay All right. <laughs> yes uh, we're not going back in time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 2019 was okay. We, we can't complain. No. Looking back, no. we can't complain. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so one, one thing we are actively doing with our roaming partners is looking at the existing commitments that we have mm -hmm. that neither they nor us can actually fulfill. Mm -hmm. And uh, looking at, uh, you know, a way out or renegotiating the terms there so so we keep a happy relationship there so mm -hmm. that's that's another thing we are doing okay. i think from an it's about point of view um if, if um, you want me to comment jose yes please um, i think definitely there is um from a, a retail point of view and there is also the wholesale perspective uh retail obviously i mean the good thing about UAE, as I mentioned earlier, is that people are going back on the plane. So it's helping somehow, mm. let's say, the PNL, even though it's not compensating from, mm. uh, from, from, from the, the loss that we, uh, mm. that we are facing. We are um, but still, we are stimulating, let's say, the usage uh, with, with uh, aggressive uh, bundles on, on the retail. Mm. Um, and on domestic. Obviously, we are also trying to push, let's say, more bundles. Uh, if, if you remember a few weeks ago, uh, during the lockdown um, and also during this, this, this COVID situation, um, Etisalat was very, very active on the domestic front. I mean, uh, we launched uh, free internet to families to facilitate, obviously, uh, access to um, uh, online uh, learning, uh, distant learning. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we offered also to our 10, 10 million mobile subscribers uh, let's say free browsing to over 800 websites um, that are more related to education, health, safety, and so on and so on. Um, so we, we were also active also on, on, on the home internet, but also on the mobile bundles and sometimes upgrading certain families uh, at no extra cost. So we were pretty, pretty active. Um, on the wholesale, obviously, like, like Arna was, was mentioning, um, we, we have a challenge. I mean, the challenge is that um, most of, let's say, the players in the industry have a uh, huge, large commitment uh, to each other. And basically, those commitments have been, um, let's say, engaged uh, uh, before uh, the, this whole situation, before the outbreak. And um, <clears throat> I think what we are doing right now is, is obviously to see how we can 
uh, address, let's say, the, 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 the challenges and the concerns from, from some of our partners. Mm -hmm. um, also some of our partners, the challenges that we are also facing as, as an anti group. So the, the beauty of this is that the wholesale community is a, is a small family. And, and I think uh, sitting uh, with, let's say, all our partners, unfortunately, right now over uh, Teams or Zoom, uh, hopefully very soon face-to-face. -face. And I know, Jose, you, uh, you will like that. Um, <laughs> yeah, we will be able to, uh, uh, to, to, to mitigate a little bit, play maybe on the cost. Yes, you mentioned uh, the finance guys, mm. they, they would love to, to see that their costs uh, uh, yeah. being reduced. Um, so playing a little bit on, uh, on the PL uh, to make everybody, everybody happy. On the other side, uh, when it comes to my, my business, I'm also managing the messaging. That's also um, a, a growing business uh, that we are seeing, and mainly the, the A2P. Um, we are putting a lot of effort to see if, obviously, the A2P could compensate, not completely, obviously, mm. because the roaming business uh, is huge, but at least to close a little bit the gap uh, on, on, the, on the roaming um, uh, with the A2P. And we are having some, some, some pretty uh, positive and good, good uh, success stories uh, so far. Um, and we are working with... Uh, with with our partners, we are working with the OTTs, we are working with uh, the different, let's say, uh, stakeholders in the industry to, um, uh, to increase that particular business um, uh, right now. Um, Jakob, um, I would like to have your view. I mean, you have a different view. You're not working for an operator. You're working on solutions that are optimizing the processes for operators and for enterprises. Um, now, I don't hear enough about innovation. I don't hear now enough about productization. Obviously, it might not be the strength of operators, and they're not quick either, you know, but they have a number of wheels they can turn, as Nabil and Arne described, that can optimize a bit um, the, the, the financial uh, performance and mitigate to a certain extent the, the shortfall. Uh, Jakob, What's your view? Should the operators do much more than that? Is, is there more they can do or, or, or how do you see it? Yeah, well, what I can see is that when, where we are involved, we have seen um, very increased demand during the pandemic. And uh, we can see that, I mean, we are including operator services, especially messaging solutions and IoT solutions where um, enterprises can consume these services directly and create solutions. So we can see that uh, a bigger stake of the, uh, of the revenue will go directly to the, to the operators instead. And uh, we can see also that the, when it's easy to consume the, the solutions, uh, they are more willing to, to create them and faster. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I, I think I can't see that the strategy, but I can see when, when, when you are close to the customer, mm -hmm. it's easier to make business to the end user that will use the solution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, Nadir, what's, what's uh, your view? Um, you know, should the operators, you know, react somehow? Uh, also, um, you know, bringing in any kind of innovation, probably focusing on the traditional cash cows, or is it ra rather sit and wait mode till people still get out and start to uh, travel again? Well, from, from our perspective, also, we are quite uh, aggressive on the retail side. We are looking at growing our retail business to push more aggressive packages. Uh, one, of the, uh, one of the attendees has also mentioned about the wholesale voice traffic. So we are also trying to be more aggressive on the voice business because when you have uh, alternatives like Zoom and uh, Microsoft Teams and Hangouts, it, it is getting a bit competitive more uh, in the market here, but we are trying to push and give uh, open pipe. Uh, you know, you pay, for, you pay five reals and you get unlimited uh, calling kind of a thing. There is also something which is which we're looking at is the unified uh, communication uh, uh, platforms in terms of, uh, you can hear me, yeah? Yes, there is some background yeah. noise, to be honest, but we can hear you. Yeah. 
So we, there's also this unified communication uh, platforms which we can look at <clears throat> in terms of because as telcos we have the voice business, the traditional voice business that has been running for many years, but uh, we, uh, we can bundle it with these conferencing services which are right now mm -hmm. taking over the world. Mm -hmm. And of course we also have a contact centers in place. So we do have the infrastructure in place and we should be looking at uh, working somewhere to trying to get some uh, revenues from these new businesses. There is uh, security, which is another major uh, potential where I think the business can be uh, reviewed. We have seen PABX hacks happening. We have seen now uh, handsets, uh, which are having, uh, which can be secured by the operators. So this is something which I believe the operators need to come out from the traditional roles and start getting into selling security also as a service to their uh, customers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So. That's an idea, yeah, that's I, a, a proposal. Sorry, any comment? Yeah, sorry, Jose, oh, also yes. just co yes. commenting a little bit, yeah, that this, Please. I mean, at the end, I see that, um, I see that, well, we have this crisis for these roaming services now um, in the meantime, okay, but I believe that there are, um, that is bringing you no know, uh, opportunities. You no, know? we we have seen, as Nadia was saying, uh, you know, an increase, for example, in traditional voice. Okay, that is compensating a little bit, but also the UCC space and the, all of this is 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 bringing us. You no, know, at the end, the enterprises need to. Uh, accelerate, let's say, their digital transformation due to this um, to this situation. No, so um, so so th there are opportunities there. Okay, mm -hmm. and at the end, you know, humans need to communicate. So so this is um, this is not going to go away. Okay, so actually, um, I think it's also an opportunity. Okay, to prepare and to make the roaming uh, data access even uh, broader or preparing for mm -hmm. that, okay? Um, uh, people will need, we, we have, uh, you know, silent roamers and all these uh, sort of uh, profiles know that uh, we need to do things, we need to, to create bundles, you know, campaigns know for, uh, for all of that, um, uh, sort of profiles now get in, into this. No, I, I think they will come because of the requirements and necessity that everyone will have to be to have the latest on information. No, around the the crisis. No, in the meantime, no, I would say no, and then um, and, and then get into where the growth no and the pace that we were having no in the in the past year so so uh, i see it's um it it opens opportunities as well okay um for for service providers mm -hmm. and okay i mean bottom line we agree that somehow we have to react and if i say exactly. we i see myself in the same group we have to react. Now, question for me, do we, do we react looking into the current services we are offering? Do we react improving the current services, launching something new, investing in future technologies, expanding the current network? This is where I'm not sure and I guess every operator will have their own strategy. Um, you know, I live in a little country in Central Europe called Germany um, and I will tell you something about uh, this country. This country has a 4G, 4G not 5G, 4G coverage of 65%, equal to Colombia, equal to Guatemala, not that as much coverage as Iran or Ivory Coast, yeah? So when the German operators ask me, what shall we do to increase, the first thing I tell them, why don't you invest a bit more into your core infrastructure, that one that we are depending on when we are walking through the streets and try to consume your data, yeah? Is that something that rings a bell on your side and where you would say, okay, probably it's the time now to improve the core service. There is currently a, a cash cow for us, or would you say we would um, rather need to invest in 
5G, RCS, artificial intelligence, blockchain-based settlement, and so on and so forth. Let me comment maybe, Jose, if you allow me, uh, on yes, that particular point. It is a lot, I mean, uh, has been probably among uh, the, the, the first in the world to invest, obviously, in 3G a long time ago. Uh, now we're not talking about 3G anymore. We are thinking even to phasing out, let's say, 3G very soon. Among probably also the first in the world in investing in 4G. Uh, and obviously on the 4G roaming, LTE roaming, I think uh, we were also key uh, enabler, probably like also Telefonica and like MTN and like uh, mm. uh, some, some other, let's say, uh, large groups uh, in, in opening up as much, let's say, LTE uh, partners as possible. So right now, I'm, I'm very very proud to say that, I mean, the team uh, has done a tremendous job in uh, opening up with more than 500 uh, live LTE partners, LTE roaming partners in the world. Um, and obviously now with 5G uh, uh, being there, we opened 5G in the UAE already last year. Um, we have um, uh, covered, let's say, most of the places here in the UAE. And now we are thinking also about 5G roaming. And mm -hmm. I'm not thinking, actually, we are implementing and opening up, let's say, uh, 5G roaming uh, with um, uh, all the, the partners that are ready, uh, 5G ready, 5G roaming ready. Mm -hmm. uh, and we open about 30 players already, uh, 30 MNOs in, in the world when it comes to 5G roaming. I think the key element, and you mentioned it, Jose, pretty well, mm -hmm. is how to improve also the customer experience. We can start investing in, 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 in new services and new technology and so on and so on and so on. But I think what is key is how to improve the existing. And I'm not talking about 5G roaming, but I'm talking about even 4G roaming because it's a probably the common denominator here in the, in, the, in the panel. We all have 4G uh, capabilities. We all have 4G roaming open up with, let's say, a lot of, a lot of partners. But I must, be, I must say that I'm extremely frustrated uh, to have sometimes a, a pretty bad customer experience when I'm traveling abroad. Just imagine, our subscribers here in the UAE are used to uh, download speed ranging from 100 to 150 megabit per second. Yes, yes. When they travel abroad, they might have 30, 40, 50 in the best case. Usually, we are talking about 1 to 10 meg. And we are talking about European countries. I'm not talking about, let's say, uh, 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 yeah, yeah. sub-Saharan countries or, uh, or other countries. Um, and I think as, as a community, well, we should, um, let's say, take that uh, particular aspect uh, very, very seriously in and looking on how to improve, let's say, all the IPX providers, uh, all the IPX capabilities around the globe, uh, investing in, uh, in, in the infrastructure maybe a little bit better, in platform a little bit better, um, and, and see how we can improve that particular, uh, let's say, aspects of, of, of our relationship. And I must say that today, uh, obviously, a lot of our partners, are taking it extremely, extremely seriously, mm. uh, even also the, the European partners. Um, and we, we start to um, see uh, some traction, let's say, coming from the mobile community on how to improve, let's say, that particular, uh, let's say, issue, which is really the customer experience. Mm -hmm. Okay, any, any other comments um, to that from the panelists? <clears throat> Perhaps I can add. Um... I mean, Nabil is absolutely right. You know, quality is very important and data speeds. Um, with us, uh, on top of that is capacity. Yeah, so uh, we are actually quarter on quarter growing with uh, 3 million active data subscribers. Yeah, uh, quarter on quarter, 3 million active data subscribers. Um, and in addition to that, normal subscribers are added. You know, more than 6 million was last quarter. Uh, so, uh, in addition to that, smartphone penetration is still um, heavily increasing in Africa. Yeah? So, all this means that we need more, more data, more fiber in the ground, um, you know, uh, bigger uh, pipes mm. to, uh, to transport all that data. So, this is something really MTN is heavily investing uh, in as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. We have uh, one comment um, from the audience, um, actually Adib uh, Maharaj, probably a colleague of yours, Arne. Um, so he's um, asking for the IoT perspective. Um, anything to comment uh, on, on IoT? 
is there anything coming, anything uh, that could be uh, developed in order to contribute to um, compensating the shortfall? Well, compensate the shortfall is is uh, is maybe too big a step. Yeah. Mm -hmm. However, and again, I can speak for my own markets. You know, this is a huge uh, opportunity in IoT. Uh, it's not so well developed um, yet, especially not in roaming. Uh, however, we are working on that, um, and uh, we want to re be a big player in this. So definitely, this is uh, another revenue stream. Um, that we are looking at mm -hmm. yeah so it, it will make um, uh, an impact in a couple of years time okay good we and have we um, yes uh, telefonica as uh, jose antonio mentioned clear yeah um, we are uh, we are working with him as well okay um another question uh, from the audience coming from senegal um, how we see the increase of um, OTT solutions, uh, especially voice services in, in, in the market. So he's referring to Libon as one example. I thought that Libon was dead, to be honest. This was like an initiative of Orange, uh, but probably is still live in, in, in Senegal. Any, any comments uh, on, on that? I can comment uh, on, on that. Uh... I think what we are seeing is uh, obviously the development of um, uh, UCAS and CPAS solutions right now as well. And that could be maybe also a new uh, revenue stream that we could, uh, we could envisage to uh, obviously uh, close the gap a little bit uh, on, on, uh, on the roaming business. Um, we, we are seeing uh, CPAS players uh, being extremely active uh, on the enterprise side. I mean, mm -hmm. companies like, uh, like Twilio, uh, like Vonage, uh, like uh, Calera, uh, those are extremely active, let's say, players uh, right now in, in the market. Mm -hmm. And I think from uh, an, an MNO perspective and from, from wholesalers, uh, I think it's also there is a, a room for us maybe to play on, on that front. Uh, and, uh, and, and from it is a lot perspective, we are, we are looking actively, let's say, to see how we can develop, let's say, solutions around, um, around uh, CPAS and UCAS. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, one quite straight question that is probably not that popular, I, I, is it now time or do the operators have the need or the pressure to increase prices? Silence? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I would say this because uh, I mean, increasing yeah. prices is um, it's quite tough. I mean, um, actually, if you see the evolution, okay, of tariffs, you now we are sort of moving towards, you know, flat tariffs, okay, mm -hmm. where you eat as much as you want for whatever amount, okay, um, and I think, uh, well, th this is a um, so really a risk for, for traditional service providers or who have a lot of business in the traditional voice, I would say, okay? Um, so, I mean, I, I think it's, it's, it's sort of really difficult, no, to go yeah. there and say, um, you know, you need to pay this much, okay? Um, um, uh, yeah. I, th I mean, to be honest, I mean, we have done that in the past. So I give you, mm. you know, five more gig and I, yeah, and you pay five euros, mm. you know, on top. But moving forward, I mean, I see mm, and, 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 and having you no know, those flat tariffs mm. um, um, somehow in the market, you no, know, um, it, it's um, not sure if how long we can stand, you know, saying to the customers, uh, pay another five euros for another five gig, okay? So, mm -hmm. so um, I, don't, I don't see it, to be honest. You don't see um, that clear. Yeah, however, we have different perspectives. I think, as Antonio was referring to the consumer perspective, so to the retail uh, yeah, part, yeah. we have also the B2B, a wholesale business, where you might have some weeds you can turn to. <clears throat> Yeah, you are right. I mean, you can just say, um, 
uh, yeah, so so if, if you provide a, a, a higher quality service, probably, you know, business mm, market, no, would be, you know, open to, to pay you more, okay? But um, normally you started with, with um, um, no, before all the innovation was, deliver a beginning with the enterprise you now and get back to the to the end consumer, not to the residential. Mm -hmm. And now I think is is happening the other way around. No, it's mm -hmm. the innovation started in the in the in the in the in the subscribers, you no, know, in the retail subscribers and and those movements and those strategies, you no know, in terms of commerce and so on, moves into the into the enterprise side, you no, know, mm -hmm. I would say. So well, um, I think um, the enterprise business having the reference of the residential people, you know, um, and, 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 and if that don't goes up, I mean, it's going to be very difficult for the, to, to make the, the B2B business, you know, uh, ask for more money, no? Even having, you know, I don't know, high definition voice, no, for example, and things like that at the end mm. will be, you know, a, a thing that uh, a standard, uh, something that you, not sure if, if you can ask for more money for that, mm. for example, okay? okay, it's a default service. Uh, mm -hmm. And this is good, I mean, because we are improving the services and the quality as um, our panelists were, were saying that uh, is sort of the aim or or we should look at, at, at moving towards that, that aim, no, uh, from a service provider point of view. Okay. Any other comment on that? I would say, you know, increasing the price would be the wrong message. Uh, for years, we've, uh, we've seen as roaming is so expensive. Hmm. Um, now also we have uh, regulators uh, stepping in. Mm -hmm. so even if we wanted to, we just cannot increase prices, um, you know, maybe across the continents, yes, because there's no regulation there when we roam in uh, from Africa into Europe or vice versa. But, um, you know, th th this is not the way forward. Uh, yeah. We have to find new revenue streams. One of them is the, uh, you know, the Internet of Things, which is one of them. And then simply enable more and more the retail side. Um, where actually we have to decrease our costs. So we have more roamers um, who can afford to actually use their mobile device when roaming. That's that's the whole idea. I think okay. maybe if I can add also yes, one of the particular elements, I Please. think we should be a little bit also more integrated in our offerings. Um, in a sense that when you look at um, uh, companies like, uh, like, uh, like Tencent WeChat, for example, where they have integrated so many elements uh, from uh, let's say telco from online shopping from uh, let's say um, uh, video conferencing from uh, so many things so many things and I think they are creating obviously a lot of values from a telco perspective mm. I think we need to be maybe a little bit more agile in developing mm. new concepts new services mm. more integrated things and I think we will probably create uh, incremental value out of those uh, those kind of integrated services mm -hmm. okay Mariano Castañeda um, is um, actually commenting that there's no answer on technology investments, the possibility of doing things in a different way. I think, to be fair, we have mentioned um, a couple of examples where um, you, 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 you mentioned um, how you can improve and, um, and probably optimize the current situation. Uh, we spoke also about um, investing probably in the core infrastructure, uh, Arne mentioned mobile data that is becoming uh, so critical and so essential also, also for the financial performance in the, in the African markets. Um, any, anything else to, to comment here? No. Well, on top of that, we're also doing RCS in a form mm -hmm. of uh, IOBA. Maybe I can mention that. But again, mm -hmm. that is simply to stimulate uh, data as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's that's and, that. And I and I know that uh, you know the operators are already, including uh, you, are already investing in five G infrastructure. So um, the investment I think is happening, 
Um, we need to ensure a return on investment. This is where sometimes we struggle. Um, and, uh, and I think this is where regular regulators need to be fair and also the consumers need to accept that uh, a price needs to, needs to be paid for the service, also enterprises, obviously. So um, we are um, actually hitting the end of the session. Um, I would like to have from the panelists um, a last outlook on what um, the expectations are for the next three years and what the, the main uh, objectives and more projects should be for the mobile operators. Nadi, you want to start? Oh, we, we can't hear you. Probably someone else yeah. start. Yeah, I mean, I, I can take uh, this one. So I, I believe the, the most important is to uh, adapt, No, I would say, yourself, the current services to the reality we have, okay? Um, be prepared or also uh, thinking positively, know that um, sooner or later, no, um, we will... Um, we will have uh, not sure if if as high as much travels and trips than than mm -hmm. before, but hoping with that. So adapt to me is is the first thing uh, you know in in making the the thing you no know, the less worse you no know, let's say, and mm -hmm. then um, create. Um, I mean, I think uh, someone was saying that. I mean. I think there is a, we need to think, you know, uh, out of the box in creating a, a, from a service perspective, service provider perspective, uh, be more agile. Someone commented that we, we cannot take, you know, a year to develop a service, okay, because um, others um, like the OTTs, you know, they will eat the whole cake, no, I would say so. So we need to adapt. We need to 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 create um, and and to promote, you no, know, the spending of of and the growing of the data, you no, know, through through mechanisms like the RCS messaging and things like that. That um, um, that I believe is is it's something that will uh, will be a, a a game changer, actually. Okay, um, uh, yeah. We cannot stand still, um, actually, and, and this uh, and this is um, uh, this is the way I would say. Yes, yes. Thank you, Jose Antonio. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, go ahead, Nadir. Go ahead, Nadir. Yeah. yeah. You, you go ahead. Well, I, well, I would just say that uh, the roaming industry, as we see today, was not built in a day, although it took uh, one snap of the finger of Thanos to just make things disappear all of a sudden. Uh, my take on this is that as operators, we need to cooperate and uh, collaborate with each other. We need to stay positive because uh, things will change and things have to change. We will not uh, stay in this situation for long. I think this break which we have got is a good opportunity for operators to rethink their investment plans, to focus on where they want to be in the next uh, two, three years with uh, 5G coming in, with AI, ML and all those discussions. We see Telefonica now getting into the solar uh, energy panel business. So these are some interesting things which are happening across the world. And mm -hmm. uh, I think that uh, the, the key takeaway from this discussion should be that we need to, uh, as operators, we need to work together. We need to cooperate, collaborate, and uh, be positive. Mm -hmm. Not for the COVID. Not COVID-19 positive. Not yeah. COVID-19 positive. We learned that today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nabil? So uh, I, I agree with another. I think uh, um, partnership, um, collaboration uh, among the partner mm -hmm. will be key mm -hmm. to go through this um, those challenging times. And and I think we need to understand uh, each other's challenges mm -hmm. um, within the industry uh, to make it happen. Um, I think that's that's the first, number one key element. Uh, I think we need to remain definitely positive in the mindset and only in the mindset and uh, looking, let's say, at, at the bright future. Um, at the end of the day, a vaccine will come, people will be going back into planes. And I think what the UAE authorities and Dubai government has done in opening up, let's say, its economy early enough was, I think, strategic. 
And uh, I'm sure it's being off right now and it will be off even uh, more in the future. Um, you also know that next year we'll uh, have the expo uh, in Dubai, uh, where the entire world will be coming in Dubai and we are welcoming anyone from anywhere uh, to, to join, let's say, the club here in, in, uh, in, in Dubai. And that will be positive. And I think that will be a key and strong message also to the world that at the end of the day, uh, we have uh, fought uh, this, this, this COVID-19 era and we are entering in a new era. He, he could be UAE ambassador. I, I love it. So, <laughs> Jakob. <clears throat> yes, uh, well, uh, we think that within uh, two years, uh, all new decisions for buying enterprise solutions will be uh, software as a service. And we think that it is extremely important to have great operations, operators, services. 5G will be very important there. And we, can, we also think that the gaming industry will, will buy streamed game instead of installation games. That's the same with the enterprise services too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think it would be a positive, positive development for operators when, when you see that as a critical point that you have. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good. Anyone else? We are through. So we reached the end. Um, we reached a happy end, I would say. Why a happy end? Because we are facing a crisis. We couldn't agree more on that. This pandemic crisis is turning into a financial crisis for many industries, less for the telecom industry than for others. We have to be fair. So we are still fortunate. But when it comes to the roaming segment, it's hitting really hard. It's an opportunity to look into the core services that the operators are offering to improve and enhance the core services to optimize the processes, to optimize the workflows, to invest probably in new technologies, something that was happening before, but probably we will refocus and gain some speed here and there. Uh, Arne said mobile data capacity is, is urgently required in Africa. So I guess this could be a very important uh, focus, a strategic one. So I hope that we will experience as users and also as telecom experts, as telecom professionals, many positive things from um, the, the current crisis. And obviously, then whenever life normalizes, that we also learned to appreciate much more what seemed to be so normal for all of us. Okay? So thank you very much again to the, to the audience, to the very active audience. Sorry, we could not answer all the questions. Thank you very much to the panelists. You know, we have uh, really high profile experts here and uh, they are very busy. They dedicated the time to us and this is something we should appreciate. And you have a wonderful evening, afternoon, wherever you are. Thank you, thank you Jose. You. Thanks to uh, all the- Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. They are all. We are at the end of this session. And I would like to thank Jose Antonio for an interesting presentation, Jose for moderating, and the panelists for joining and sharing their knowledge. Also, I would like to thank our audience for participating and listening. We are looking forward to welcoming you at our next webinar sessions planned on the 28th and 29th of September during our CC Telco Infrastructure Summit. Please please visit our event portal for more information. This panel will be soon available on our CC Media portal. If you're interested to support and sponsor one of our future branded webinars, please contact us, CC team. And for now, stay safe and healthy and goodbye. Thank you, Nona. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Bye, guys.